Beware of the religious cult at Pensacola Christian College. My name is David J. Stewart. I am a born-again Christian, saved since age 13 in 1980. I grew up in the Baptist church culture, so I do have a good understanding of how Baptists think, still being one myself at age 55. Although they do not advertise being Baptist in theology, they are for the most part considered independent Baptists in the PCC camp. By camp I am referring to Pensacola Christian College, their campus church and thousands of complicit graduates. When I moved from the island of Guam to Pensacola in 2021, I attended campus church for a few months. It was a very difficult time in my personal life. I was sleeping homeless in Walmart's parking lot, because the wicked greedy Wood Spring Suites Hotel in Pensacola cancelled my 30-day confirmed reservation, just because they could to get more money over the 4th of July weekend. When I told Pastor Redlin what had happened at their 2021 4th of July campus church picnic that I attended, he cold-heartedly walked away from me. He just didn't give a rat's ass. In the weeks to follow at campus church, I was horribly mistreated with rude comments, false accusations and insensitivity from the senior pastor at campus church, Jeff Redlin. Sadly, people do not matter at Pensacola Christian College in Pensacola, Florida, which institution I will often refer to in this presentation hereafter with the acronym, PCC. See there is something very wrong with the attitude of PCC leaders, which includes their shameful campus church, literally built on the campus of PCC. When I first started attending campus church, at first I saw the grandeur of the big auditorium. I heard the nice sounding religious music. But something didn't seem right. The church felt dry and empty, missing the power of God. It didn't take me long as a humble man who walks close to God that the PCC are immature, woefully lacking of God's compassion for hurting people, and they just don't care. No doubt they would argue that claim, but the proof is in the fact that in a shameful email to me on August 2, 2022, Pastor Redlin told me that I am not allowed to attend their church services. This just evidences that hatred, petty prejudices and misplaced egos at Campus Church and Pensacola Christian College. I mailed a letter to Campus Church, to Jeff Redlin, pleading for his forgiveness and a second chance to attend their church. They totally ignored me for over a month. So I mailed a second letter to all of the pastors at Campus Church, and sent a separate courtesy copy to PCC leaders as well, so they could see the shameful behavior of their church pastor who doesn't care. They all totally ignored me. This is how a cult behaves, not Christian people. After six long weeks I hadn't heard a word from any of them. I had even given Pastor Redlin my mobile phone number, but he refused to talk with me. Sadly, PCC has so many people supporting them, that they have become arrogant and have a big head now. They don't even hesitate to excommunicate, expel and throw under the bus anyone who offends them. It didn't matter to them that I humbly offered to remove all my criticisms from social media. They didn't care. The truth is that PCC's leaders and the pastors of Campus Church, are cold-hearted religious thugs. They woefully lack God's love and compassion for people. Pastor Jack Hiles was exactly right about PCC, who said in his sermon titled, Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard, that, quote, The pastors have destroyed the churches, and they've been trained by people that have never built churches, and they have no compassion. End quote. Dr. Hiles practically gives the address of Pensacola Christian College and Campus Church, who share the same address in Pensacola at 250 Brent Lane. The sad truth is that they do not love individual people in the PCC camp. All students are carefully monitored and required to show absolute allegiance to cult leadership. Personal opinions must be kept to oneself, or they will expel you faster than you realized what happened. This type of fascist Bible college and church authoritarian leadership is what almost always eventually leads into cultish behavior, where people like me who think for myself are forced out, shunned and banned from returning. If I had my way, PCC's leaders would all be fired for supporting an ungodly person like Jeff Redlin who doesn't give a damn about hurting sinners. Dr. Hiles is so right, PCC is full of academic types who woefully lack God's compassion for individual people. As Dr. Hiles rightly observes, it is because they are academics and not church builders. Pastor Hiles even allowed the wicked Hammond Times newspaper attend the First Baptist Church of Hammond, Indiana, because Dr. Hiles loves people and he knew that even wicked reporters needed to hear Bible preaching. But their attitude is 100% the opposite at PCC and Campus Church. They don't care about helping people like Brother Hiles did, they only care about themselves, the cult system at PCC, making a name for themselves and most of all, keeping the millions of dollars coming into their institutions each year. It is pathetic. Thankfully, one man plus God equals a majority. I have taken a firm biblical stand against the corrupt PCC camp, because they wickedly bid Godspeed to the hell-bound Lordship Salvation preaching Bob Jones University crowd. I attended the shameful Harvest Baptist Church on Guam for one year. I was shocked as I heard their pastor preach the devil's lie of Lordship Salvation. I was disgusted as I saw church members using dozens of different Bible versions, and the pastors themselves quoting from multiple different Bible versions. It was a house of confusion, madness before my very eyes. 
Harvest has adopted the devil's false understanding of what it means to repent. Harvest's incompetent pastors, then and now still today in 2022, teach that you must turn away from a lifestyle of sinning if you want to go to heaven. But that is works, not the free grace of God. When I started attending Campus Church at PCC, I learned quickly that PCC is joined at the hip with the Harvest Baptist Church on Guam. Harvest even has Jeff Redland's name listed on their KHMG 88.1 FM radio station's webpage. Birds of a feather flock together. This is why the wicked pastors of Harvest Baptist Church on Guam are so arrogant, haughty and they still refuse to reap in of their false repentance and lordship salvation. As long as ungodly institutions like PCC and Campus Church bid Godspeed to damnable cults like the Harvest Baptist Church on Guam, and their satanic headquarters at Bob Jones University in Greenville, South Carolina, they will never be sound in the faith. What saith the scripture? Titus chapter 1, verses 10 through 14 read, quote, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables, and commandments of men, that turn from the truth. End quote. Did you understand that? The Apostle Paul is telling Titus to rebuke them sharply that they might be sound in the faith. Rebuke who? Rebuke anyone who preaches a counterfeit plan of salvation, another gospel, which cannot produce the new birth by the Holy Spirit of God. I have been sharply rebuking the Bob Jones University camp for the past several years, but they are not listening. They are still not sound in the faith. They don't care. Why is that? It is largely the fault of wicked institutions like Pensacola Christian College, because they refuse to rebuke the Bob Jones camp sharply for their counterfeit gospel, as I am faithfully doing to please God. By God's grace, I will continue to rebuke the Bob Jones cult sharply as God commands, and I will also continue to rebuke Pensacola Christian College and their rotten ungodly pastors for wickedly bidding Godspeed to the apostate Bob Jones camp. No wonder Bob Jones University will not forsake their demonic false teachings, demonic false Bible revisions and demonic false understanding of what it means to repent concerning salvation. As long at the ungodly PCC camp hobnob, support and go along to get along with the Lordship Salvation crowd at Bob Jones University, they will never repent. They will never become sound in the Christian faith. Pensacola Christian College is sinfully empowering the Calvinists at Bob Jones University, and the wicked devil pastors of the Harvest Baptist Church cult on Guam. I am the sworn enemy of the devil's lie of lordship salvation. I am the sworn enemy of the devil's fake Bibles. This is the real reason why the ungodly pastors of Campus Church won't allow me to attend their church anymore. They are idolaters, placing themselves above the inspired word of God choosing rather to bid God speed to evildoers than to rebuke them sharply as the Holy Bible commands in Titus chapter 1, verses 9 through 14, as I have been faithfully doing since 2014. What exactly is, Lordship Salvation? In his helpful sermon titled, Jesus vs. John MacArthur, Pastor Ralph Yankee Arnold says, quote, Lordship Salvation is the unsupportable and unbiblical belief that the performance of good works, the promise of good works, or the evidence of good works, must accompany faith in Christ to establish or provide evidence that such faith has resulted in eternal life. End quote. Yes, that is correct. Any time that you hear a corrupt pastor saying we cannot know for sure if someone is really saved, until we first watch that person's life to see if their behavior changes over time, that pastor is a lying false prophet. He has been inspired by demons. He is a wolf in sheep's clothing an enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ. Sadly, the incompetent pastors at PCC are guilty of bidding Godspeed to false prophets in the Bob Jones University cult. Bob Jones College today officially sells, uses and supports multiple different Bible revisions, all of which are corrupted by Satan except the inspired King James Bible. We are today living in woeful times of apostasy in the churches, most of which has been caused by corrupt Bible colleges producing incompetent graduates. From talking with PCC's graduates, I have learned that the prevalent attitude among PCC alumni, and PCC leaders as well, is that it is none of their business what other Bible colleges and churches do. But that excuse won't fly. If I as a sinner can see their wickedness, do you think our holy God doesn't see it? Why is PCC wickedly bidding Godspeed to the Bob Jones cult? In a word, money. The Harvest Baptist Church on Guam cult sends many of their high school students to PCC, so PCC returns the favor by accepting them as Christian brethren, even though they are unsaved hell-bound false teachers. No one is saved who trusts in Calvinism to get them to heaven. Calvinism merges sanctification with justification, so that if your life hasn't changed to their sanctification, as far as they are concerned you were never saved at all. Pastor Chuck Phelps of the Colonial Hills Baptist Church in Indianapolis, Indiana, is on the board of directors at Bob Jones University today. 
In a sermon preached at his church on November 1, 2009 titled, False Faith, Pastor Chuck Phelps made this statement, quote, If your professed faith has not produced change it is false faith. The Apostle Paul is saying if your confession has not changed your life, it will not result in eternal life. What you say with your lips must be backed up with your life, or it's false faith. End quote. Dear friend, that is the devil speaking. Later in that same sermon, Pastor Phelps says, quote, You can't work to have salvation, but if you have salvation it will work. End quote. That is blasphemy against the word of God. Chuck Phelps is teaching Calvinism, saying that you are not really saved unless you do works to prove it. This doctrinally perverse type of foolish thinking causes untold millions of churchgoers to needlessly worry, fret and wonder if they are really saved, based solely upon their struggle with sin on a daily basis, which we all have to struggle with as Christians. Dear friend, if you have to look at your life to prove that you are saved, it just proves that you are not. Salvation is of the Lord, all of it. Shame on Pastor Jeff Redland for not taking a biblical stand against the Bob Jones camp. Shame on PCC leaders for remaining silent, for sinfully hobnobbing with the Bob Jones crowd for the sake of filthy lucre. And that is really what it is. God never approves of doing wrong in order to get a chance to do right. It does not please the Lord that PCC trains students to go out and live quiet, peaceful Christian lives, while never speaking a word to contend for the Christian faith. I have met PCC's graduates, and they are all without exception cowards. Jeff Redlin is a shameful timid coward, a mama's boy, a panty-waist pathetic preacher, a Casper Milktoast fella. Go look up on the internet who Casper Milktoast was in the 1930s, a timidly coward who never stood for or against anything. I say that kindly toward Pastor Redlin, but truthfully, when I started attended Campus Church in July of 2021, Pastor Redlin scolded me for my website ministry. He said that he and the other pastors of Campus Church found fault in my website ministry, falsely accusing me of finding weaknesses in preachers. But that is a lie of the devil told by those incompetent pastors. The truth is that I am faithfully contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints, as Jude chapter 1, verse 3, commands believers to do. How is it that I am finding weaknesses in preachers who are sending lost sinners to hell for all eternity with their satanic lordship salvation and devil's bibles? Am I doing something wrong because I care enough about people to tell them the truth? In reality, it is the cowardly henpecked pastors at PCC, henpecked by their PCC masters, who are dropping the ball for God. It is those ungodly pastors who refuse to stand for God. By God's grace, I am standing against the devil's lie of lordship salvation. By God's grace, I am standing against the devil's hundreds of corrupt English Bible revisions, the ones that Bob Jones University and the Harvest Baptist Church on Guam wickedly love, use, sell and promote. They only care about making more money. They are merely playing church. As Matthew chapter 15, verse 8 says, they are honoring God with their mouths, but their hearts are far away from God. They are utter hypocrites at PCC and Campus Church, belittling me because my preaching puts them to shame. PCC's pastors are wimps, cowards and yellow bellies who won't take a stand against anything, except rejecting me because I have taken a faithful stand against them. God knows that I speak the truth. I am the only one in this situation who has, and is, done the right thing. Marty Heron, the former longtime senior pastor at the Harvest Baptist Church on Guam, is a hellbound devil. Marty ruined the lives of thousands of people during his time as senior pastor at Harvest, leading the congregation to follow Dr. John MacArthur's poisonous damnable theology. I heard Marty Heron with my own two ears, when I attended the Harvest Baptist Church on Guam for one year, tell hundreds of people in a Sunday morning church service, quote, it is not enough to admit that you are a sinner to get to heaven, you must also turn away from a sinful lifestyle. I knew immediately that Pastor Heron was not saved, and I went home and literally cried. I contemplated leaving the church, but felt that God wanted me to try to help them. So I took my own money and bought hundreds of dollars worth of books authored by genuine men of God. I bought for them Pastor L. Lacey's helpful book titled, NIV, The Antichrist's Bible. I bought for them the book, Somebody's Got to Milk the Cows, by Pastor Jack Hiles. I bought for them Michael P. Bowen's great book in defense of the gospel, I Never Knew You. And I gave them the book by Pastor Max D. Yautz, Martin Luther, Master of Deceit. It was for sharing these truthful books with the pastors of the Harvest Baptist Church on Guam, that I was forced out of their cult and banned from returning. Marty Heron quit as pastor in 2018. Sadly, Harvest's next pastor was just as incompetent, Gary Walton, was continued the ban against me, forbidding me to return. In hindsight, I was casting my pearls before the swine, and God didn't want me to go back to that cesspool of iniquity. By God's grace, I took a stand against the pastors of Harvest, which I will continue to do until the day that I go to heaven to be with my dear Savior and Lord. Gary Walton is a wicked devil. So also is Marty Heron. These ungodly fools have much blood on their hands for bidding Godspeed to Bob Jones University. Go search online for Steve Pettit's counterfeit gospel, 
and my web pages will come up right away. Steve Pettit is an unsaved Calvinist, as is John MacArthur, Marty Heron, Chuck Phelps, and Gary Walton. These men all preach the same lie as John Calvin, that faith is not enough to get to heaven. Your life must also change to prove that your faith is real. But that is not God's simple plan of salvation. The only thing that a person automatically gets at the time of being born again is God's indwelling Holy Spirit. Nothing else. A changed life is something entirely different, which is a separate matter of growing in grace and sanctification, which has absolutely nothing to do with receiving God's free gift of eternal life, which is by faith alone in the good news of Jesus Christ crucified, buried and risen the third day. Right doctrine matters. I have faithfully run the race for Christ. I have never been paid a single penny for my 20 years of website ministry. By God's grace I have been faithful to preach the truth, for which I have been rejected, shunned, ostracized, ignored, belittled, slandered, hated, mistreated and despised by the ungodly Bob Jones University and Pensacola Christian College camps. These two ungodly groups at PCC and Bob Jones are in bed together, committing spiritual adultery, spitting in God's face and laughing in mine. But the time of reckoning is coming. Pastor Jeff Redlin must give account to God someday why he refuses to let me come back to campus church. I have apologized for offending them, but they won't accept my apologies. God knows that it is because I told the truth, and they can't handle it. The truth hurts. PCC is guilty of being complicit, guilty of quietly going along to get along with the damnable heresy being preached at the Harvest Baptist Church on Guam, and the damnable false gospel being preached at Bob Jones University. Dear friend, it is very much our business. It is our business because what these institutions teach our nation's youth adversely affects thousands of churches. That is why PCC pastors are cowards, who merely play church and never stand against anything. They criticize fiery preachers like Pastor Stephen Anderson of the Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona, while they refuse to put their dog into the fight. Most churches today are pathetic. The most dangerous place for a lost sinner today is in a neo-evangelical Baptist church, like the corrupt Harvest Baptist Church on Guam. Please beware of Pensacola Christian College. They are not what they appear to be. PCC's leadership are arrogant bullies who have no regard for God, people nor the truth. If they truly loved God then they would love me, but they won't even allow me to attend church. You can tell a man's character by the way he treats those who can do nothing for him. Jeff Redlin gets paid a disgusting six-digit salary. That is shameful. Since he is living large parasiting off PCC, he couldn't care less about anyone except those who pander to him. That is not a man of God. And I am going to say it again, to go on record. I am still willing to do whatever the pastors of campus church require of me so that I can simply attend their church again. God sees that they don't want to reconcile. They don't want to make peace. So why should I stop exposing them on social media? I refuse to remove my criticisms against them until they show me that they care. I haven't seen one iota of love, concern or compassion from the pastors of campus church, nor from PCC leaders. Not once when I attended campus church at PCC did Pastor Redlin ever tell me that he cared about my health afflictions. Not once did he tell me that God loves me. Not once did he make me feel like I was welcome at campus church. Not once did he offer to pray with me. I seriously doubt if Jeff Redlin has ever got down on his knees to pray. I seriously doubt if he ever prays for me. Redlin is a phony who is sinfully parasiting off of Christendom for his own person gain and pleasure. The PCC camp are not contending for the faith. They don't care. When I attended campus church, I heard assistant pastor Timothy Zacharias call campus church, heaven on earth. You've got to be kidding. How is campus church like heaven when you selectively care about people? How is PCC like heaven when a born again child of God like me is banned from attending their church? PCC is a cult. Only cults refuse to allow people to attend church. Jeff Redlin has arrogantly put himself in the place of God, condemning his Christian brother for telling the truth. There is no forgiveness at PCC. There are no second chances at PCC. They merely want to go through all the superficial motions of playing church, but their hearts are far from God. PCC is only concerned about protecting the cult system, but individual people do not matter. Their actions prove what I say. I am banned from attending campus church. Only an ungodly phony for a pastor mistreats people like that. I have been praying for God to show me things I can do to expose the wickedness at PCC. I decided today to start mailing out letters to Baptist churches across the country that support Pensacola Christian College. I am going to inform these churches of what PCC is doing to me, and of their wicked support of Lordship Salvation. Something needs to change. No churches may listen to me, but I am going to keep in fighting against PCC leadership until the Lord shows me otherwise. I am as David in the Old Testament, for whom I am gratefully named, and PCC is the uncircumcised giant Goliath. I just have a slingshot, a website, I just have a pen and some paper, and some stamps to mail letters to churches. But the Lord is on my side. The truth will prevail.
PCC has sinfully chosen to languish in mediocrity, but I am hot for the Lord, contending for the faith, rebuking false prophets sharply, while PCC is in bed spiritually fornicating with the devil's crowd. Shame. Shame on Jeff Redlin and Timothy Zacharias, and shame on the sinfully corrupt idolatrous leaders at Pensacola Christian College who think they are above God. There is no biblical wisdom in getting along with infidels, it is an unholy alliance with devils. By God's grace, as long as I live in the city of Pensacola, I will expose the PCC camp and their ungodly campus church that selectively cares about people, until they humble themselves as I have, so we can reconcile. They don't want to make peace, because they aren't right with God and just don't give a damn. But I do give a damn. I do care, very much so. Right doctrine matters. All people matter. The way that we treat other people matters. It really does. Thank you for listening dear friend. The hallmark qualities of a child of God, who walks closely with Jesus, is that they are bold to speak the truth, and they unconditionally care about everyone, not just the people they choose to care about, like Jeff Redlin wickedly does. I will not go away. I will not shut up. Please contact PCC and voice your opinion. You can post comments on their YouTube channel at Campus Church. PCC has turned off their comments, because they have so many enemies. You can email Pastor Jeff Redlin at jredlin at campuschurch.com. You can also contact them on their websites. I'd appreciate if you would ask them why they won't allow David J. Stewart to attend Campus Church, when David is still trying to reconcile. Ask them why they won't forgive their Christian brother. Why don't they care? Let them know what you think about that type of abusive behavior. PCC is laughing at me, because they can. If enough people start contacting them to complain, then at least they won't be able to rest at ease in their wickedness. PCC is an abusive cult and it needs to stop. Thank you for listening. And always remember dear friend, people just want to be loved.